Excellent. Uh, we're uh, we're going to try to show at least a few interaction examples in uh, live demonstration here. Now, this is dangerous, so bear with me if it doesn't quite work, but I think it should. Uh, I want to show you the fact that there is a login process. It's not the way that it should be, but I want to show that there there actually is a login going on. We're creating a, a session in Team Center. Uh, there's a few things that we can do through this um, Leo-based web client front end, and I want to show a uh, change request query, and then we'll poke around and do some navigation through the linked data uh, that you would if you're familiar at all with the, the Leo um, example code and you've tried to use it, uh, this should look relatively familiar. Uh, it works basically the same way as it would if you ran it out of the box um, with the uh, triple store back end. I want to show the fact that we're using trace links in Team Center to provide some types of navigation, some types of traceability, and show that those trace links actually can be in a similar way to any other resource link in OSLC when it makes sense, when it's appropriate. And it show that there's a way to do a trace to an external resource, something that's not controlled directly by Team Center, but Team Center has a way to denote the fact that there's an outside thing there that you have a, a trace relationship to. Uh, if all goes well, we'll try to create a requirement and do a quick update on that requirement and then add a trace link to it. There's also um, some things that we'll try to show, and, and maybe I'll kind of cut that last part short, and we'll jump over to RTC and try to show and answer the fact that we did do an RTC, uh, a simple RTC integration here. I, not, I don't want to say an integration. It's, it's the ability to, for RTC to consume Team Center resources through the integration. That's what we're trying to establish. So uh, let me just jump into this demo mode. I have to start up the Tomcat server. This is the local Tomcat that is hosting the connector code on my local machine here. So we'll put that down here. We can kind of wait, watch that. Bring in my browser. And we'll do the login. And this is my standard... Uh, Team Center credentials here, the group and role are not necessary. It's my default group and role will be fine. And I don't know if you can see down here, but you'll notice that there's a bunch of logging going on that um, Tomcat's throwing back information about what it's doing to establish the Team Center session. So now we're logged in. And the next thing I wanted to do was just show some of the interactive capabilities. Uh, you can get the root services document, which uh, is interesting because it is trying to open it in some random application in Chrome. Usually it just pops up in my browser, but it doesn't know how to do that in Chrome apparently. Uh, so we'll just jump straight into the change request. Let's, this is an interactive picker. Now, this query setup is not the Sparkle query type. This is a query panel that's specifically designed to match the query capabilities that it provides. Uh, we ultimately, in the future, would need to uh, at least make a decision whether we can support a, a Sparkle query capability with uh, the Team Center production connection. In this case, I'm just going to go for everything that starts with ECR, and it turns out there's probably only one or two.
Here's one. If I hit that OK, it loads up. Now, this change request is the root of our, our systems engineering example problem or our, our uh, scenario that we talked about before. We're uh, saying that we need to add a, an EU variant of the uh, ultra low emission vehicle. So we'll talk about how this gets implemented later on. We may not get there today, but we'll see. This is, this is a fairly involved example, but what's important is that you see the fact that there's a numerous links here. These links in this particular client aren't being expanded or re-rendered with something that's more uh, intelligible to the human. They are in their more raw state. This is how the the, North, the Leo code in the early days, at least, uh, rendered these links. So it allows you to see exactly what the URI of the other endpoint might be of that link. And we're seeing here that we've used the change management defined link types of uh, tracks requirement. That one works relatively well. It, it exactly matches or more or less matches what we're trying to accomplish here. Those are requirements that are related to this change that will have to be modified in order to, to satisfy this change. The implements requirement is the one key requirement that we know will have to change. That's the kind of the root of all the requirements that are involved here. Uh, the effects requirement list, unfortunately, that that's bad language. Effects requirement is really too narrow. It should be effects resource. So many of these things are basically affected resources, and we'll see, or we can see in the, on the Team Center side how these are re represented there, but basically they are the objects that are satisfying most of those requirements who then will have, have some play in this change and may have to be modified, implementations may have to be modified in order to meet the changed requirements and how the requirements are reallocated as we take the top level requirement and decompose it into how it affects all those other requirements. And if we, we want to navigate to these things, one of the really cool features of OSLC is the um, – oh, it's not, it's not working. Uh, sorry. Let me go. This is live demo for you. I have to open this in uh, Firefox. This code wasn't written to properly render in Chrome. So let me fire up Firefox here. Bring that over. Had that open for another reason anyway, so let's kill this. This may work. Get back to where we were. Sorry about that. Okay, so here we see the pop-ups that OSLC provides. This is the uh, compact UI, compact rendering model. So it allows a, a hover to pop up over each of these links and give you some information about what's at the other end of the link. So if we go see the actual requirements, you see that there's a U.S. market region requirement. Each of these things now has an RDF representation, 
and you can see the RDF down here. You'll notice that something I wanted to point out along the way, you'll notice that the URI for all of these team center based resources starts with this part. So we're saying that there's really only one service endpoint for all of these resource types, and that's Team Center. It's a little different than the original uh, LEO implementation in that uh, each one of those service endpoints was basically assumed to be a separate server. Uh, in this case, it really didn't make sense to do that because they're all coming from the same team center server, so there's a transactional integrity issue if you don't have a single server representation in the OSLC domain. We need to make sure that that's going to work out correctly for all of the various other domains of interest and other kinds of implementations that people are using in the, the uh, OSLC world. We do see that the, the namespaces are different depending on the kind of thing that we're dealing with. This is a, a change management resource that we're looking at, so it's mostly change management namespace. There's also um, the ability, and this, this is a good example of this right here, and we'll see this throughout. There's the op option and the possibility to use namespaces that are outside the OSLC standard namespaces. And the client doesn't know any better. It just allows that to come along for the ride. It doesn't try to render it. So that change request revision item type, which is a team center specific thing, is not being rendered anywhere in the UI here, but yet it's not causing any issue either. The client just basically lets it come along. We can look at some of these other types of resources. Power control unit it is a, a resource that's basically a physical implementation of the power control unit. Uh, this one head is also showing the fact that this is a revision, a later revision of the power control unit actually revision three, we can see by this part of the name here, but it also shows here that it's it's a version of the base resource, the base power control unit, and it has a an assembly structure of view under it. We can look at the fact that there's some constituent objects that make it up. There's actually uh, some board support software and some hardware that goes together to make this power control unit. So it's an assembly structure if you understand the LM terminology. Okay, let's go back to our menu here. So, Mike, before before we go on to the, the next one, I, I did have a question in the chat which okay. was, ask, was asking whether um, RDF is part of OSLC or if it's just a chosen representation for this, for the work that you did for the proof of concept. Well, RDF is the standard representation that OSLC uses. It's not part of OSLC per se. Mm -hmm. I mean, RDF is defined outside OSLC. That's right. OSLC has chosen to use RDF as its representation for all these resources. So our RDF represented in, in or uh, I, I should say serialized into a number of different forms because RDF is, is just a concept of how do you represent resources as triples, as a subject, predicate, object, triple. The way that you can render that, if you will, or serialize that into a bit stream or byte stream is a number of different ways. Um, you can render it as XML. You can render it as what's called turtle or M3. And uh, there's probably a couple other forms I don't know, but those are the two that I'm most familiar with. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Is, there is one more, one more question.
question that came in just as you were answering. Uh, so does the change that we've been looking at exist in, in, the team, in the team center application or in RTC, or is it just in that connector that you've built? No, oh, it's, it's actually in Team Center, and I can show it to you in Team Center if you'd like to see it there. Uh, that's that's good, and I, I like these questions that lead us to um, get people to understand this more because I wouldn't necessarily have shown that, but I'll show it to you in Team Center. This is a Team Center 9 client on that same database, and uh, we'll just go right by item ID. That's easiest. And we'll open that change request. And you'll note that that's the same change request. Um, actually, I need to probably open this in the uh, change management application in here, if I can find it. I don't do this very often. There it is, change management. So this is that same identical uh, change in Team Center, and uh, we have there's a whole bunch of things under it. The problem item is the particular single requirement that we thought we needed to change. Let me open this figure so you can see it a little bit more. Uh, the impacted items is that list of mainly implemented items, implementation items. Reference items is the set of other related requirements that may have to be modified based on this requirement change. Uh, there are no plan items in here. Oh, I guess there's a test schedule, but the plan items don't show up in our other thing. Uh, there's an issue report here actually under the implements relationship that, that's not handled by the uh, connector either. So the key thing is that this is exactly the same change as we saw in the connector. Um, I, mean, I could really live dangerously and, and try to remove one of these things from the change and then we could re-render it over here and make sure that it goes away, but that might be a little tricky to do. So, Just to, uh, if we play it safe, just to follow up on that, on that question though is, well, where are the requirement resources? Are they also in Team Center? Yes, these are in Team Center, yes. Excellent. So, so basically what's happening is your uh, your uh, proof of concept, the connector you've made, is reflecting into uh, reflecting what's in Team Center. Yeah, and so far, yes, correct. Okay, that is correct. Um, if if we were, um, we have not implemented anything going the other direction to uh, show an object that might exist over in RTC or someplace in either the connector itself or ideally it would show up here in, in Team Center. But if we had a production implementation of this, the Team Center client itself would show that, oh, there's there's a requirement and that's really a link over to uh, RRC or someplace mm -hmm. at, on the other end of an OSLC connection. But that requires that the production implementation inside Team Center itself be done according to OSLC standards, which we didn't do. Right. We, the, the Leo based intermediate connector. Okay. So there's yet, a, yet another question where we have a very uh, inquisitive audience today, which is excellent. So, how is the data being linked into RTC? Is that a manual effort or is that something that you're taking care of? Through the connection. Uh, well, I, I, I'm not quite sure I follow the question. You, you, whenever you do anything with linked data, um, you have to have some 
mechanism and methodology to decide what to create, what links to create. Mm -hmm. uh, if we go, let, let's jump straight into the RTC land, so maybe this will make more sense. Uh, I've got a, uh, a defect here that I started to create in change management on uh, a little RTC test installation here. And I've created this. It's just uh, a simple defect that fails to meet this emission requirement, right? And what I'm really wanting to do here is I want to link this to the requirement and potentially maybe some of the things that are involved in meeting this or fixing this defect. And they happen to be over in Team Center. So I've got to go through my connector. Now I've set up my connector as a friend so we can show that we can go that direction. And um, this is the way you would normally work in RTC. You have to go and find the requirements or whatever that you want to link to this to this uh, issue or this change. Um, the OSLC TCUA endpoint or per provider has been registered here as a friend, so that it's able to be queried and be asked for some kind of, in this case, requirement to link to this defect. And we're going to link to an existing requirement. We're going to use a requirement picker to do that. And okay, there's our requirement picker. And that looks just like what we saw before, right? Uh, the delegated UI facilities in OSLC allow this to work. Basically, the, the endpoint, the server over there, in this case, the intermediate connector code that we wrote uh, throws this, this dialog up and allows me to use whatever query mechanism is available from, whoops, oh, uh -oh I lost the application sharing, sorry. Yep. <laughs> what happened there? Is it, is it back? It's coming. Okay, there we go. Yep. Back? Okay, great. Got it. Um, the, uh, this, this delegated UI now allows me to use that endpoint and go and find the requirement I'm interested in. Now, in this case, I want to uh, find the U.S. Requirements. So I'm just going to say U.S. star and search, and you'll notice that it's going talking to Team Center through the connector. It, it gave me some information there, and uh, the U.S. emissions requirement is the one that I'm interested in here. So now it tied that U.S. emissions requirement in as a tracked requirement, and this has the same hovering capability to pop up some of the short information about what's at the other end of that link. Uh, it renders it slightly differently, gives you a little nicer border and such, but it basically fills the dialog with the same information, the same stuff that we saw in the web browser. Hit save on that and persist that. Now, the, when I do hit save, uh, there's another piece of this that wasn't implemented that's basically a, a special service that RTC, the JAZZ framework provides. It's not part of standard OSLC. That, that is a service that specifically allows this thing to automatically create a backlink. Uh, I don't care about the backlink, so I just allow it to, to go on without. And now that RTC implementation, this RTC database here, knows about that emissions requirement over in Team Center, and it's linked to this defect. So okay. whenever I have to deal with this, I know how to get there. Uh, but that's how you do it. It's, uh, there's no specific automation available that I've seen to automatically create those links. If you had a specific case that allowed you to make judgments and to create that knowledge, 
and automatically create the links in some way, that would be fine, but I think that that's outside the scope of normal OSLC. Excellent. Now, of course, you've generated a few more questions. Okay. If Good. you don't mind. Uh, actually, if you, if you go back on that page, um, uh -huh. the first one that came in was, would this, would, would you have been able to do the same thing using the Eclipse IDE? Uh, in theory, yes. I, I've uh, tested it um, briefly in an earlier version of RTC. It was a 4.0 um, uh, release candidate, RTC implementation, mm -hmm. and it, it sort of worked. Uh, it rendered correctly if they were already there, mm -hmm. but the uh, creation process I don't think was, was working correctly. And I have, frankly haven't gone back and reinstalled it, but it should work. It's supposed to work exactly the same way. Excellent. Now, if you if you were to click on that link, it will bring up your connector. Is that what happens? Correct. Right there. Perfect. And is the so then because we're going through the connector, then am, am I right to assume that the data that say is shown when you hover, when you do the uh, the, the hover, or if you click this link, that's actually going to be the real up-to-date data. It's not cached anywhere. Uh, that, uh, that's correct. It's it's lightly cached in the connector itself because of the the uh, service-oriented architecture API that we used with Team Center. Team Center that API uh, handles some level of object caching, so there's there's a potential of some delay there. But uh, if you implement this correctly, and frankly, I'm not sure we implemented it at all exactly per the book, but uh, if you implement it all correctly, there's uh, event triggers that go through that API and that actually will force the, the uh, updated information to appear. Okay. And I've, I've tested it, and, and most times it does exactly what you expect if you hit refresh here. And something's changed over in Team Center. It will actually change here. Mm -hmm. So, no, the last the last question that came in was about a uh, team Team Center resolving a link to an RTC resource. But I is that something that you have implemented, or it's no, not yet? Implemented? No, we've not we've not implemented that in the in the proof of concept. We assume that if it works one way, it'll work the other way. But uh, frankly, the, the, the Team Center side requirements are important there because uh, you, we don't really have the ability to go in to Team Center and change their source code, right, to make their UI respected. So that's something that Siemens has to do. Okay. Well, you, you had better continue. We, uh, I think we were asking good questions, but I know there's more you want to get to. Yeah. Well, there, there's not that much left. So. I think we've we've made it through most of what we were wanting to demonstrate, and if there are questions that are leading us down other paths, that's that's my idea. Um, the uh, trace to an external resource. I just wanted to show that briefly. That is one way that you could, even with this really rudimentary connector implementation, you can envision it could go to something in RTC because RTC or any any resource that can be uh, represented as a URI, essentially, can be at the other end of this kind of a, a link. But let me show you that real quick. I um, actually wanted to go back over here briefly. There's this breaking requirement. Uh, I have a breaking requirement, and in Team Center land, it has a a link to uh, what's called a web link object type in Team Center, and we'll show that over here. Let's get back to my query panel.
will show that this trace relationship, whoops, going to ask for a proxy validation, but uh, it actually comes up with the URL that points out to the web, goes to the GPO, Government Publishing Office, and actually gets the PDF for MVSS 135, the break um, testing or break uh, requirement standard for passenger car brake systems. So that shows that we can actually have trace relationships or other kinds of, of traceability out to non-team center resources. And this could have been anything that you could point a URL at, basically. So that was a, a simple, but uh, it, it does open up the possibility, even with a, a rudimentary example like this or a, a very simple implementation, mm -hmm. we can uh, go outside. 